I have a question. Who in their right mind would sell this on Amazon? I mean, this is ridiculous. You can get this high voltage generator for under $10 from Amazon. And I can guarantee you that it will hurt pretty badly when you touch the high voltage arcs. So that basically means it is some kind of taser, right? But that means that here in Germany, where I live, it needs to come with a certification mark to be considered legal. And guess what? There's no mark to be found on the device. So they're using the only for science experiments excuse to sell those things. Which I think is terrible. Because high voltage can be such a beautiful thing to explore if you know what you're doing. I mean, yes, you can create some scary arcs with Tesla coils. But then you can also make music playing plasma arcs, arcs that you can use as a lighter, or arcs that you can even touch without getting shocked. So let's ignore this garbage device and instead focus on this high voltage transformer that you can also get for cheap from the internet. With it, you can experiment properly and create all kinds of different arcs. Which is exactly what I will be showing you in this video. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Altium. If you're looking for professional PCB designer software that can fulfill all your PCB design wishes, then look no further than the Altium designer software. After getting used to it, it offers pretty much everything you could ever need when it comes to designing a PCB. So feel free to test the Altium designer for free by yourself by following the link in the video description. First off, let's have a closer look at the transformer. After removing the adhesive tape, it was clear that its ferrite core consists of two pieces that hold two primary windings and one secondary winding. But by simply measuring the resistance of those coil pairs, we cannot determine the winding relation between the primary and secondary, because the high voltage side uses way thinner wire. But by assuming that the circuit transforms around 4 volts on the inputs to 15,000 volts on the outputs, we can calculate an approximate relation of 1 to 3,750, which is quite a bit. And I think the plastic fins exist in order to isolate high voltage sections from one another, so that nothing unintentionally arcs over. Because, as you might know, in air we need above 1 kV per millimeter in order to create an arc or plasma tunnel. Due to the isolation of magnet wire, however, this voltage can go up to, for example, 3 kV. And with such plastic fins, or for example, epoxy resin, which often gets used for such purposes, the breakdown voltage can go up to 20 to 40 kV. The fin design, however, does come with some weak points. But enough already with the theory, and let's get to something more practical. Because oftentimes the transformer comes as a kit with suitable driver circuits. So after soldering all the obvious components into place, I got to the two primary windings. Now the markings of the PCB made it look like I had to short the two inner wires. But that would have definitely not made any sense. So I did a small test with my interpretation of how to hook things up, and that worked flawlessly. The solution was to short the far left wire with the second one from the right in the middle. This way the final result on the PCB looked like this, and the schematic for the circuit looked something like this. And after powering the circuit with an input voltage of 4V and a current of 2.8A, we successfully created an arc. Awesome! Now this is the kind of arc that will shock you quite a bit and is capable of being used as a lighter. But before I was able to investigate the circuit to show you why exactly this arc shocks you, the circuit just abruptly died on me. It seems like the used transistor burned out, so I replaced it with a same model one and powered the circuit once again while having a look at the most important voltage waveforms and measuring the temperature of the transistor. 
and as it turns out, it overheats way too fast. Which was actually not a surprise, since we are dealing with an NPN BJT, that due to its high collector emitter voltage drop, dissipates quite a lot of heat. Combine that with the fact that the transistor has to withstand big voltage spikes when it turns off, and you start to realize why it got destroyed so soon. Now you might be thinking, why not just replace the BJT with a MOSFET that comes with a low drain source voltage and a high breakdown voltage to solve those problems. Well, I actually tried exactly that, but had to find out the hard way that this circuit pretty much only works best with BJTs. The reason is the way this circuit works, which as soon as voltage gets applied, lets current flow through the feedback coil into the base of the transistor and thus lets current flow through the main primary coil. This not only induces a voltage into the secondary, but also in the feedback coil, which opposes the input voltage. That means at some point the current through the base stops, and the primary current falls abruptly. Afterwards, there is no more opposing feedback voltage, and thus the cycle repeats. And because of the dependence on feedback current and the low voltage levels on the primary sides, this circuit is not a good fit for MOSFETs. Also, it is self-oscillating at currently a frequency of around 19 kHz, which we cannot easily change in this circuit. That would be desirable though, because with different frequencies, the transformer as a whole does not only react differently due to its impedance, but at a certain frequency and above, arcs no longer shock us but only burn our skin, which I definitely wanted to try out. So I built up a basic flyback converter circuit with a MOSFET according to this schematic. I will be using my function generator to control the gates, but a basic 555 timer circuit could also easily do this job and even include a bit of audio modulation if you want your arcs to sing. But never forget to add an RC clamp to the mix, which limits the voltage spikes across the MOSFETs that would otherwise destroy it fairly quickly. And after this obligatory pre-banter, it was time to play around with different frequencies. And it was quite fascinating to see how the current draw decreased with a higher frequency due to the impedance of the coils while still featuring frequency plateaus in which the current draw increased, probably due to some resonance behavior. I also found out that at around 80, 120 and 250 kHz, it was easily possible to create an arc, while with other frequencies, this was a lot more difficult, if not impossible. And while the arc shocked me at frequencies below 200 kHz, it was truly weird to find out that at 250 kHz, the arc no longer shocked me and only burned my skin, which was still a bit painful. So all in all, this circuit is pretty awesome for testing, but the arcs were not super powerful and the MOSFETs also heated up noticeably. That is why for my last circuit, I wanted not only a more efficient one, but also powerful one. And I was able to build one in a matter of seconds, because I actually created it before during my induction heater video. It is a ZVS circuit, or zero volt switching circuit, which are notorious for achieving a high efficiency due to their switching behavior. The frequency at which it oscillates is set by the inductance of the transformer and the utilized capacitance, and I wanted to go with a frequency of 80 kHz, since I knew from earlier experiments that this was a suitable frequency for my transformer. But as you can see, I'm using a capacitance of 133 nF, and the inductance of my primary coil is around 113 microhenry which would equal a resonance frequency of only 41 kHz. And after powering the circuit with 12 volts, we can see that the oscillation frequency is close to the theory. But what we have not considered yet is that the inductance decreases when an arc is formed, and thus I was able to reach my 80 kHz goal frequency without a problem. Needless to say, this kind of circuit is way more powerful than anything before, 
So now I have to warn you that dealing with high voltage can lead to fatal injuries if not handled correctly. But anyway, I'm super happy with the circuits. Since the input power is reasonable, the created sine waveform is beautiful and the MOSFETs also stay pretty cool. So all in all, those experiments with the HV transformer and the different circuits were not only entertaining for me and hopefully for you, but also educational, which is way more than you could ever expect from the high voltage generator we started with. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, then consider supporting me through Patreon. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.